click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in this video we will study a new topic called as C++. C++ is a programming language. Now before starting a C++, first we will understand a language, a concept called as language. Now what is language? A language in which we can communicate with each other. So for an example, suppose if I am learning an English language. So I cannot start a learning English language from directly. Like you know, I cannot start making a paragraph directly. So before starting a paragraph, I have to start with some basic syntax of English language. So basic Basic syntax means what basic vocabulary of English language I should understand so I will start with learning the alphabets once I will be uh, very well very well familiar with the alphabets then I can start creating a word once I know how to create a word then I can start creating a sentence and once I know how to create a sentence I can start creating a paragraph so same thing is related to whom any programming language to learn any programming language we need to understand what are the character sets of that programming language it means what what are the alphabets which are there in that programming language then we need to understand how to form a word in that particular programming language then we study how to create an instruction in the programming language and once we know how to create an instruction you can write an entire program in the programming language now see there are various types of programming language starting from Cobol Pascal, C and many more. So in this particular series we will be learning C++ language. C++ you can say is an extended version of C. C was basically a structured programming language whereas C++ is an object oriented programming language. What is object oriented programming language that we will not talk right now right now we will just study a uh, basic syntax and the uh, basic things of c++ language once we will understand how my c++ language works how my basic c++ language works then we will jump on to object oriented programming language and basically you have object oriented programming language in the 12th standard so when i will start taking the lectures of 12th standard at that time we will start with the introduction of object oriented programming language so right now we will give importance to only a basics of C++. As I said, C++ is an incremented version of C or extended version of C. C++, you can say, is a more powerful than uh, C language. Now, before starting a C++, as I said, uh, how we learn English language, in the same way, we need to understand or we need to start with the C++ also. So, let us compare my C++ with the English language. So what did I say? In the English language, first I will start learning alphabets. So I am writing here alphabets. After learning alphabets, then I will start creating word. So this is my word. After learning how to create word, I will start creating a sentence. And once I know how to create a sentence, I will make paragraph so in the same way your alphabets are nothing but character set of c++ so here i am writing my alphabet is a character set once i know how to create a character set then i will start forming variables keywords identifiers and all together I call them as what tokens so after character set I will learn how to form tokens once I know how to form this then I will start writing instructions and after instructions then I will start writing a program so this is how my C++ 
of lows actually goes i have to start from the character set then we'll see how to create a variable what are the keywords how, what are the identifiers once we know those then we'll start writing a simple program and then we will start jumping onto actually a programming of c++ now c++ is a programming language what is a programming language programming language means what this is the language in which you can communicate with the computer so this set this set of instructions are written in the c++ language then i called it as what that program is of c++ ka program if i write uh, instructions in the c language then i called it as what c program and so on if the program is written in the c language then i will call it as c program if the program is written in c++ language then i will call it as what c++ program now see uh, constantly i am calling one word that word is called as what program so first we need to understand what is a program the definition of program says a set of instruction executed by computer in the form of lines is basically a program so as i said once you will learn how to form a token you will create what instruction and those instruction together are called as what program so now so let us start with the c++ program now before starting c++ program we need to study about the alphabets which we use in a c++ and those alphabets are nothing but what character set of c++ so let us have a look on what the characters which are allowed while writing a c++ program those characters are called as character set of c++ and have a look on it the character set of c++ consists of alphabets alphabets means what capital a to z and small a to z next some digits 0 to 9 digits and some special symbols they are like this so these are some of the say special symbols which are allowed while writing a c++ program so this entire thing forms what character set of c++ so while writing a c++ program only the characters which are there in the character set of c++ are allowed to use a while writing a program next is called as keywords the keywords are called as reserve words now what are keywords keywords are reserve words whose meaning has been already been explained to compiler so compiler knows the meaning of this keyword so i call them as what reserve words now reserve words means what those words are already reserved by compiler so the wo those words i cannot use anywhere else in the program in some other way for an example suppose if one keyword is there like integer then integers meaning is already known to compiler then i cannot use that integer as a variable name in my program because integer is a keyword so keyword are such words whose meaning is already explained to compiler and i call them as what reserve words in c++ there are around 48 keywords have a look on those 48 keywords you won't understand the meaning of all these 48 keywords at a moment but as and when we will go ahead with the course you will understand the meaning of each and every keyword so let us go through each keyword asm auto break case catch care class constant continue default delete do double else enum extern float for friend go to if inline int long new operator private protected public register return short sign size of static struct switch template this throw try type df union unsign virtual void volatile and while these are around 48 keywords which are there in the c++ compiler we'll understand the meaning of each and every keyword as we'll go ahead next is called as variable now what are variable now see before writing a program first we need to think about how we will be writing a program means suppose if i am performing addition of two numbers so it means i will be doing operation on those two numbers for an example suppose if i am performing addition of 10 and 20 then i need to store those 10 and 20 somewhere so where i will store those 10 and 20 i will store them inside a variable so you can say variables are a container where we store a value so before writing any program first we create a variables and why we create those variables basically we create those variables to store a value variables are something where we can store a values into 
them now suppose let us go back to the example suppose if i am performing addition of two numbers that is 10 and 20 then it means i will be dealing with two numbers and those numbers are 10 and 20 now actually when my program gets executed what happens those values get stored onto a memory location of computer so for an example this 10 will get some store onto some random memory location of compiler this 20 will get also store onto some random memory location of compiler now while processing this program it would be very difficult for us to remember those memory location suppose if your program is very small if you are handling only with one or two values then yes you can easily remember the memory location but if your program is very big if you have a more number of values which are there in the program then it would be very difficult for us to remember all this memory location so what basically we do we store we replace those memory location via some name and those names are called as what variable so you can say the definition of variable is variables are the name given to whom memory location since for normal human being it is not possible to remember all the memory locations which we deal with the program so what we do we replace those memory location by, with the variable so now i hope you have understood the concept of variable so instead of storing 10 onto some memory location i mean 10 will get stored onto memory location but those memory location i will give that i will give some name to that memory location so suppose if my memory location is 1000 i will call it as what a suppose if my memory location is 2000 i will call it as b so instead of saying ki i have stored value 10 on 2000 or i have stored value 10 on 2000 i will call them as what i have stored value on to variable a and i have stored value on to variable b so this is the concept of variable variable are such things which we use to store the values or variable are a containers where we put the values or variables are the memory variables are the names given to whom memory location now let us see how to declare a variable and how to use the variable in the program now while declaring a variable there are some rules which we need to follow variable name your variable name cannot start with the digit for an example 5a cannot be your variable name this is not a valid variable name 5a no this is not a valid variable name your variable can be like this a5 your variable name cannot contain any special character into it except underscore so underscore is allowed while creating a variable but no other special character than underscore is allowed while creating a variable your variable name can be like this a underscore b but your variable name cannot be like this a at the rate b so no special symbols other than underscore is allowed while creating a variable so these are some of the rules which we need to understand or which we need to remember while creating a variable next how we declare a variable your declaration of variable should be along with the proper data type now what are those data type that we will see later on but as of now I'm, i will just take an example of one data type and that data type is integer now what is data type from the name data type you can understand it suggests what type of data which we are using now for an example suppose if i am doing operation on these two numbers 10 and 20 it means what i am performing addition of what 10 and 20 now if you see this 10 and 20 both the numbers are without decimal point so if my numbers are without decimal points then i will call them as what integer numbers i will call them as what integer numbers so integer is my data type integer suggests what type of data we are using which type of data we are using we are dealing with the data that data is without decimal number so that type is called as what integer data type so while declaring your variable you have to declare a variable along with the proper data type so the syntax of declaration of variable can be like this data type space variable name semicolon so as of now we are familiar only with the integer data type so i will write here int a semicolon so here i have created a variable a whose data type is what integer so in the a variable basically you can use 
or you can put the numbers those numbers are without decimal point so this was all about the variable so let us have a recap of variable what is variable variables are used to store a values into it or variables are the name which are given to whom memory location so while writing any program first we need to think about what how many variables will be using in the program and how to declare a variable that also we saw the declaration of variable should be along with the proper data type so this syntax is data type space variable name and there are some rules while creating a variable your variable name cannot start with the digit no special characters other than underscore is allowed while creating a variable and in the C++ your uppercase and lowercase letter are distinct uppercase and lowercase letter are distinct means what capital A and small a is treated differently so when I write capital A and when I write small a my both the a's will be treated what I mean it will take both of them as a different variables so uppercase and lowercase are what distinct so uh, these are some of the rules which we need to understand or which we need to remember while creating a variables now next we will understand what are the data types of C++ data types of C++ are divided into three types number one is called as built-in data type number two is called as user defined data type and number three is called as derived data type so so there are three categories of data type built-in derive and user defined in built-in you have integer float character double in derive we have array function pointer and user defined we have class structure union so these are three types of data types built in derive and user defined so as of now we will just concentrate on built in data type and then we will see what is derive and user defined time uh, user defined data type later in the video so built in is something which is already there in the compiler so the meaning of those built in data type is already been explained to compiler compiler knows the meaning of those data type and i call them as what built in data type the next comes is called as derived data type those data types are derived from the built in data type hence i call them as what derived data type so array function pointer they are derived data type and the last category is called as user defined data type user defined data types are something which are created by user so i call them as what user defined data type in the structure programming basically we use structure and union but in the object oriented programming we make a use of what class so what is class and how the user defined data type works that we will see later on so i hope you have understood the concept of c++ what is c++ how we start with the c++ what is what are the character set of c++ what are keywords of c++ how the variable is formed and what are the data types of c++ now in the next video we will discuss about the each built-in data type in detail thanks for watching this video in the uh, for the latest video please subscribe ekida